Hello, this is Kiwi Crash Course 14. It's been a while since the last video. I was away for a little bit, but hopefully things should get back to normal now. Before anything else, I want to mention that Kiwi has recently announced its second programming contest. I'll probably make a short video about that directly, so I won't say too much right now. Just that registration is open, the contest will actually start on the 15th of April, and you'll have four weeks to make an awesome app following a broad theme that will be announced when the contest begins. You can check kiwi.org forward slash hash contest for the full details, and do be assured that applications will be judged in a range of criteria, so don't be afraid to give it a go. Anyway, for this video, I thought I'd get back into things by covering this Kiwi Screen Manager. That's a widget that can contain any number of child screen widgets, displaying them one at a time, and providing an API to switch between them with an optional transition effect. The Screen Manager isn't actually that hard to use on its own, but it's a core component of many applications. It's the obvious way to create any kind of setup with different screens, like a separate menu and game screen. So I've had a fair number of queries about it. In this video, I'll just demonstrate the basic ways to use it. To get started, I quickly threw together a program with three different kinds of widget. These will be our screens, although right now they're just box layouts. And they're what you can see here, in this case stacked vertically. At the top of the first screen, it's going to have this image and a couple of buttons that I'll show you how to use to switch between screens a second screen with a different image, and then these screens I hope to generate randomly to show you how to generate things dynamically and add them to the screen manager in real time, and I give them each random colours when it comes to it to uh, show you how to do that. To actually show you the code, it's all very normal, just as I've covered in the last few videos, the important things we need. I've defined the three kinds of screen I'm going to use, although right now, like I said, they're just box layouts, and everything else is defined in Kiwi language, uh, just as I've shown before. Again, I won't go through the details. As usual, I'll put a link to a downloadable version if you do want to download it and follow along. The only thing that I think might be new is this, uh, at the top, this rule is not a rule for a widget, but it's a rule for a root widget. That means Kiwi language sees that I don't have these triangular brackets at the beginning and the end, so it's not a rule for a box layout. Instead, it will actually create this box layout as I've described here and return it as the result of builder.load string. You can see I've assigned it a root widget. So that root widget is a box layout with three children, first screen, second screen, and color screen. I don't need to do that. I could have made my own class to do it uh, and given it a rule as normal, but it's just a little bit more concise. At the end of the application, you can see again as normal, I've just created an app with a build method, and from the build method, I return the widget I just created and then run the application so everything is totally as normal in all the previous videos. So enough exposition. Let's actually do something. First of all, we need to actually import the screen manager and the screen classes we're going to use. So we'll do from kiwi.ux.screen manager, import screen manager, predictably, and screen. And now I'm going to convert each of these three classes I made into screens. Let's replace box layout with screen. Um, screens are not box layouts, so now I have to add a box layout to the screen to duplicate the previous behavior. Nothing special here, just screens can only have one child, so if you want to add more than one thing to them, you have to put a box layout in first. But nothing fundamentally complicated about it. There we go. Now we're going to actually need a screen manager class to use. Let's make our own class, class my screen manager, which right now needs no particular behavior. Uh, I could have just put a screen manager in here, replacing the box layout, but I'm going to add a method to it in a few moments uh, so uh, it's easiest to prepare like this. Now we can do that. I can replace the box layout with my screen manager. Like I said, when the builder passes this Kiwi language string, it sees I want to build a screen manager, like I've said, uh, it'll do that. It's not a box layout, so the orientation is now meaningless. And for now, I'll just add a first screen and a second screen. In fact, I can even show you what that looks like. There we are. Now, the screen manager is displaying a single screen. In fact, the first one I added to it, the first screen, and it has this image and the two buttons, but they currently do nothing. That's what I'll show you next. Let's do that. Now, the buttons are defined here. The key for switching between screens is that they each have a name. In this case, I haven't defined them yet. Let's do that now. First screens will have the name first. Second screens will have the name second. 
And to switch between them, I'll add this on release event to the button. So when the button is released, it calls this code. Again, just as normal as I've coded in the past. We'll do app, that's the currently running application as I defined at the bottom. Got root. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but this is simply a variable containing the root widget of the application. In this case, the screen manager, because that's the thing I returned from the build method. And then the screen manager's current property is what has the name of the current screen. If I change this, in this case to second, it's going to see I've changed the name of the current screen. It has a screen with that name, the second screen. So it's going to see that. It's going to automatically change to the second screen. I do the same thing here in the opposite direction. Oops, on release. .root.current equals first. And that's going to switch to the first screen that I added, the first screen class, which is part of the screen manager. I'll leave this get random color screen for now. We'll do that next to show you it's working. Here's our first screen. This button still does nothing. But now when I click go to second screen, you can see it switches. I could have put anything in this second screen. It could be in my game. It could be a setting screen for my script for my game or a level chooser or whatever. But now I can easily switch between it any time I want. Uh, just the same, I can click go to first screen. And you can even see the screen manager has this uh, slide-in transition to go between them. You can choose different transitions, sliding in all di different directions, fading in different ways, or mimicking the translations of given platforms like Android or iOS. But I'll, uh, I'll cover that briefly at the end, although not in detail in this video. What's missing is now the get random color screen doesn't work. And what I want to show you here is rather than adding the two screens at the beginning, like I did here, to create them dynamically. To do that, we need a new method in the screen manager that would create the screens for us and add them to the screen manager and switch to them. We we'll use def new color screen self. Um, we need to make a screen, so we do s equals color screen. It needs a name. Uh, I'll just use tire name equals time dot time. Uh, just because I'm only going to switch to this one, so I don't really care what the name is. I just need something unique. You can see I've already imported time, so that's okay. Uh, the color screen will have name equals name. And we need to give it a random color. So color equals random dot random for three. Again, a normal kind of syntax. So that's going to be three random numbers for the RGB values of the color property, and then the alpha is one as usual. And you can see in the definition, that's what I've used to set the color of its ellipse. Uh, you can see here. So each screen will have a different random color. We've made a screen widget, now we have to add it to ourselves as normal. Self add widget s. And now we can switch to it. We can do self.current equals name. See, that's the name we defined here. It's the name of the screen. Actually, it needs to be the string of time dot time. The name has to be a string. But now this method creates a new color screen with a random color, adds it to the screen manager, and changes the screen manager's current property to that new screen, so it will switch to it for us. We can then make the buttons actually do something. Uh, on release app dot root dot new color screen. Same thing for the second screen. And the color screen itself also needs to do the same thing. Plus, of course, let's make go to first screen work. Seems reasonable. Let's run things again. Here we are, looks the same as before. We can go to the second screen. But now when I click a get random color screen, it switches to a new screen created dynamically. And I can keep doing that to keep making a new one with a different ellipse. Each time I press it, it adds a new widget to the screen manager. Uh, in principle, you might want to clean up the previous widgets if you're making a lot of them, otherwise they'll just bog things down. But that's not important to us here, so I won't go into it. There are other properties of the screen manager to go through the current, to, to go through all the existing screens if that's what you need to do. So that is almost everything I wanted to show you. I hope it's been clear the general mechanism here. All we have to do is we take the widget that we want to put in the screen manager, we put it inside a screen widget, we add our screen widgets to the screen manager, and then we use this current property to switch between them. I'll just show you one last thing. We can switch the transition that the screen manager uses. I'll use fade transition. There are several. We can come in from different directions, like I said, or all different sorts of things, all different kinds of even uh, 
fancy shader transitions to mimic all sorts of OpenGL effects. For now, fade transition is enough. And we can define it here. In fact, we need to do import it in the Kiwi language. Fade transition qx.screenmanager.fade transition. And we can set the transition of the screen. Fade transition. This is, of course, something you can do dynamically as well. I've set it a single time in Kiwi language when it's created, but I could have done it here. I could have set the transition to something different every time I added a new screen or anything like that. So don't feel that this is limiting. Let's see what that actually did. Now when I click go to second screen, instead of sliding in, it fades through to what the new uh, image is. That is more obvious in the random colors. Now, most things stay the same, but the color of the ellipse fades to whatever the new screen is. So are different effects, and of course you can do whatever you like. There are lots of different ones that could fit different kinds of apps that you might be making. That is everything for now. It's a bit of a lightning tour through what Screen Manager can do, but I hope now it is clear that how you can start thinking about using it, and how it really is simple. You don't have to do anything special at all. You just take the widgets you've already defined, you put them inside screens just by putting them as a child of a screen object, and then add those screens to the Screen Manager, and there's nothing surprising about the way it works. You're simply changing a Kiwi property to update the Screen Manager's contents. For next time, I'm not sure what I'll do. I actually don't have many ideas left uh, that I definitely want to get done. If there's anything you'd like to see a video about, please do let me know, or I'll keep going through the ones that I do have left to do if there's nothing that comes to mind. Other than that, thank you for watching.